The world's most comfortable shoes are made of wool. Even Tab Magazine said so. The Wool Runner is your go-to lace-up shoe for everywhere you go. Flexible, supportive, and light as a feather, they take you seamlessly through your entire day. The Wool Lounger, it's a breathable, lightweight, slip-on shoe that's perfect for everything from a red-eye trip across the country or your favorite sport event. Comfort, style, and sustainability do not have to be mutually exclusive. Allbirds is dedicated to making stylish, comfortable footwear using premium natural materials designed for life's everyday adventures. Less is more, which is why Allbirds doesn't include any unnecessary logos or detailing. Instead, Allbirds designs the simplest, most comfortable shoe they could using premium sustainable materials without the premium price. Allbirds textile is made from super fine New Zealand merino wool using fibers that are 20% the diameter of a human hair. Think about that. So unlike the wool you may be used to, Allbirds breathable fabric regulates temperature and moisture without any itch. Allbirds merino wool is ZQ certified. That means it meets the stringent standards of sustainable farming and animal welfare. In other words, no sheep were harmed in the making of these shoes. With the holidays right around the corner, it's time to consider Allbirds as a gift for someone on your list or just for yourself. They're available in a variety of new colors. You can find the perfect pair for you at Allbirds.com. Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. Go online to GEICO.com or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, hit the dirt. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me a po 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 he is Jalen Rose. What up, Dad? I'm David Jacoby. <laughs> and on the cool check And we are Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. What do we do, Miss Rose? We get a people yeah, yeah, what yeah, they yeah. want. Yeah. Yeah. Jalen Rose, you always say, that athletes will not leave millions of dollars on the table. However, there are reports today from our colleagues that Kevin Durant would be willing to sign a deal for just $31 million instead of the 35.4 that he could sign with the Warriors so the Warriors could retain the rights to Andre Iguodala and Sean Livingston. Like I said, you always say athletes don't leave money on the table, but in this instance, can't you see how this makes sense? It makes sense, and based on the tone that you're using that example, it's almost like mincing my words, because here's the thing. The NBA instituted a rule this offseason that would have prevented Kevin Durant leaving leaving the Oklahoma City Thunder to join the Golden State Warriors, kind of like you may see with Paul George and or Gordon Hayward, because he's an all-NBA performer, you get a super max. And if you leave a super max on the table, Minimum, it could cost you $50 million. Maximum, it could cost you up to $70 million. That's the kind of money I'm talking about a player not leaving on the table. But when you're talking about 4 to $5 million per year to keep a team intact that you joined that won 73 games without you and one of the guys that came to the Hamptons to recruit you is an integral part of the team, so much so that he was the finals MVP a couple of years ago, it only makes sense. There is a difference between $40 million and $4 million. I will definitely recognize that. In advance of Game 1, LeBron James had to deal with something tragic. His Los Angeles home, a home that he owns but doesn't live in, was vandalized with a hate crime written in graffiti on his front gate. He addressed this in an interview with Rachel Nichols. Let's give it a listen. No matter how much money you got, no matter how famous you are, no matter how many people admire you, at the end of the day, being a black man in America... Is, uh, is very frightening, and it lets us know that we got so much farther, so much further to go to be equal in this, in this country. Jalen, what do you think about LeBron's statement? He almost said, no matter what you accomplish in life, you're still an N-word in most people's vision. Wow. That's what he almost said. In 1991, N.W.A. came out with an album called In Words for Life. And there was a song on there, the second record on the album, that frankly, I listen to this record really often. I have it currently on my phone. And this literally reminded me of that. A couple of different reasons why. One, if you notice what was spray painted on his 
home was N-I-G-G-E-R, not N-I-G-G-A. Now, that distinction is talked a lot about it for public consumption, whether it's people that look like me or even people that look like you. And that distinction is the ER in the minds of a lot of people that look like me clearly represented slavery, Jim Crow laws, segregation, a time in our country where blacks were looked at as less than a man. Now that term is used a lot of times by people that look like me as one of endearment, like my homie, like my brother, like I'm inter like you're welcome into my fraternity when I call you that. And there are people that use that term toward people that look like me towards others, but there are also multiple races that use the term whether they do it outwardly. And if you don't believe that, just listen to rap music. When you go to a concert, there are a lot of times songs have that lyric constantly throughout. There are those that have the discipline not to use it ever, and there will be those when nobody's around or at a concert or when they're around people that look like them that use that term. I'm not happy that this took place for LeBron James. I am happy that we're talking about it. Mm. And if you look over my shoulder, there are constant reminders that respectfully, I didn't need Colin Kaepernick to take a kneel for the flag. I didn't need this situation for LeBron James to endure for me to know that I want to have constant reminders around me, like I mentioned for that record. One is the Ali Summit that almost took place 50 years ago, where you see Jim Brown, you see Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and the aforementioned Jim Brown clearly in solidarity for Muhammad Ali in his stance about the war. And another one is Tommy Smith and John Carlos, the stance that they took via the Olympics in order to protest in their own way what they, their injustices that they saw in the country that they were able to run track and field for, but not necessarily have the freedoms that they felt like they deserved. So when that takes place, in a situation like LeBron takes place, it makes you feel like, man, I got a $20 million home. And I'm living in Brentwood, California, and I'm still subjected to things that you think, you hope, that we as a society are past, but we're clearly not. By the way, this is just probably one individual, male or female, a group of individuals. We're not going to cast aspersions on the entire society. No. But it does show that we've come a long way, but obviously we still flagrantly have so much further to go. The timing is certainly unfortunate as we look at the NBA Finals, but like you said, it's a very important conversation to have. Moving back to basketball, LeBron James knows that he is not going to play basketball forever, and when he spoke about him and Kyrie and their relationship, here's what he had to say, quote, He's 25, he's got at least 10 more years. I don't. So I want to give him the blueprint and see what he can do with it. Take us behind the curtain. What is the blueprint? So here's the, blue, here's the blueprint. The blueprint is before LeBron James returned to Cleveland, Kyrie Irving was leading lottery-bound teams as a number one pick. Once he returned, those games started being meaningful. The one thing that people overlook is that before he actually came back to Cleveland, Kyrie was an, all, was an all-star, was a Team USA performer, signed a max contract. So he's shown that he had the ability to be a productive high-level performer in the league. Yeah. But when you start to be on these major stages, this will be his third straight NBA Finals. The first year he played game, well in game one, but he got injured. Mm -hmm. game, the, the second year, he clearly had his breakout party to the point where he and LeBron became the first teammates to both score 40 in an NBA Finals game. And obviously his jump shot on the right wing is still being heard around the world as a confidence booster to a player that then catapulted himself not only professionally, but in the minds of others, into one of the elite performers in the game. LeBron James is talking about continuing to build on that sort of legacy, playing, winning championship level basketball. This NBA Finals is swirled with Durant's decision to join the Warriors. We're all talking about Durant's decision to join the world's Warriors. Durant being a villain. Durant joining the team that he couldn't beat. Zaza Pachulia addressed this in a press conference and check his math. So what, we have 450 players in this league, minus 15 from this team. The rest of the 225 players want to be part of. I hope so. What? <laughs> of course. You know, if you There's have... 450 players in the league, 
minus 15. And then I think he said 225, was it 255? What? How could Zaza be off by so what? much? I'm no mathematician, and anyone who listens to this show knows that I get numbers wrong all the time, and so do you. But how do you be off by that much, Zaza? I know he was trying to be eloquent with his point. And I know he was trying to get past what took place in the Spurs series. Mm. But your math got to be a little bit better than that. Just do it ahead of time. Just estimate. You know what I mean? Just say something like, like, there's ways around this, Zaza. Obviously, you know the tricks of the trade on the court. You need to learn the tricks of the trade on the mic. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Jalen Rose, you and Steph Curry don't have much in common when it comes to basketball abilities, but you do have something in common. Let's listen to Steph's most recent interview on ABC. Is there any chance that you're going to shave that beard before the NBA Finals Not a over? chance. Not a so chance. As, as the title baby face back in college, I always wanted to just, just grow a beard just to say I could and I could never get it to connect yeah. on this side right here. I had this piece that was so always... So just this side was the problem? Yeah, just this All side. Right. And about six months ago, it, I, well, it started to connect, so I got <laughs> I got a little carried away with it and made up my own reason to have a playoff beard. Okay. So this is like four months of, of, okay. of, of hard work and perseverance. Jalen, is there still hope for you? Maybe your beard will connect one day. It worked for Steph. It works for him, but a lot of things working for him, like shooting threes from half court, <laughs> between the leg, behind the back, being the unanimous MVP, winning 73 games, winning a championship. Here's the difference. I'm older than him. A little bit. Also, my skin is way worse. Mm. I think that's what initially started the fact that I couldn't grow a beard because I had so many bumps and blemishes on my face, it was no chance. <laughs> my problem with the beard is this, is now he's going on wax. These NBA Finals moments, are they echo through history. For the rest of his life, he will have to look back at this NBA Finals, win or lose, as the NBA Finals, he had a terrible ginger scraggly beard. If I was Aisha Curry, I would take the Clippers to him while he was sleeping. Aisha. I would. I just would. Well, Draymond Green, as he always was, was asked about trash talk, specifically trash talk with LeBron James. The two of them got into a little bit last time around in the finals, and here's what he had to say. Quote, I can care less if anyone says LeBron is the greatest of all time. The only thing I care about is that they can't say LeBron is the 2017 NBA champion. Is Draymond already starting the trash talk with LeBron? He's not trash talking. That's just reality. And... A pivotal moment to last year's playoffs happened when they got into an altercation that eventually led to Draymond Mm -hmm. Green being suspended. So that seminal moment clearly is replaying in his head and all of our minds. And so now entering these playoffs, he's not on the brink of being suspended if he gets another technical. And I would assume he's not going to put himself in position to be suspended or ejected from a game because it probably cost his team a championship last year. I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to be the person because of that level of behavior to cost them one this year. I think one distinction that needs to be made regarding this issue is that Draymond Green was not suspended for his altercation with LeBron James. Draymond Green was suspended for being a habitual line stepper. And isn't it safe to say that Draymond Green has changed his behavior after last season? I still think that he has the same court generalship. He still plays with the same fire, the same emotion, but he's gotten less technical fouls. Absolutely. The Cleveland Cavaliers wore the blue jerseys instead of the hideous black t-shirt jerseys in game one. Soft move or boss move? It's a boss move. Why is that? To wear whatever jerseys that you choose. If you feel like it's going to put you in a position to win the basketball game. At this point of the season, you got the two best teams in the league going at it. They're going to be franchises releasing special edition things to try to monetize the level of opportunities that's going to take place on the biggest stage. But all we care about is when the ball gets tossed up, who's going to be out there performing. And for me personally, I would only care if they were shirt jerseys. 
because I can't play with a shirt jersey on. You know what? LeBron James had his T-shirt jersey specifically tailored by the Cleveland Browns tailor. I feel like if I was Kyrie Irving, if I was Richard Jefferson, if I was Tristan Thompson, if I was J.R. Smith, I'd be like, I want a tailored jersey too. Like, why does Brian get the tailored jersey? I can't have a tailored jersey. You know that conversation is happening. Uh, no. No, no, no. That's not how it is. Brian kind of gets whatever he wants. I think that's very fair. <laughs> we, uh, famously... Our man, Dave McMenamin, say it, Jalen. Manny, man. Manny, Manny, man. <laughs> Dave McMenamin said on the True Hoop, formerly True Hoop podcast, currently the TBA podcast, that an anonymous Cavs player said JaVale McGee was not smart enough to stay on the floor in the NBA Finals. Well, guess what JaVale McGee said? How can an anonymous person piss me off? Doesn't that sound like a smart response? That is a genius response. And again, we talked about this with Zaza Pachulia. We're talking about this with JaVale McGee. They're not charged to be the quarterbacks of their basketball team. They have roles. Jaja, it was to be a reckless performer in the previous series that got Kawhi out of the game and eliminated the Spurs' opportunity to even win one contest. But with that being said, he's out there to rebound, set screens, and do all of the dirty work. That's why he's in the league. JaVale McGee's out there to run, jump, dunk, block shots. He's not out there to be an intellect. One of the keys to this series will be the play of Kevin Love moving forward. Here's an interesting stat that I saw on Reddit.com. Shout to Reddit. Shout out. Kevin Love has completed more passes over 20 yards in the air than the following NFL teams. The Broncos, the Ravens, the Jaguars, the 49ers, and the Texans. Does this interesting stat say more about Kevin Love's outpass brilliance, outlet pass brilliance, or more about the terrible quarterbacks of those NFL teams? I appreciate that stat, and it says a lot about Kevin Love and his ability to pass the basketball. His middle name is Wesley. His father played with Wes Unsell, who was famously known for his outlet passing. But this says more about those teams and why the Cleveland Browns not listed. I can't really take it serious. We didn't say them. (laughs) They must have had one pass that was like 22 yards. That's definitely what happened. Who knows? It was probably a flea flicker or something. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Jalen and Jacoby, your favorite rapper's favorite show. Shout Yesterday out. on Instagram, Young Thugger, Young Thug, was just pre- premiering his new track. He was in the studio. When you know when you're in the studio, you want to get the vibe right. You want to get the, the, the atmosphere right. You want to have the right people around. Who did Young Thug have on in the background, Jalen Rose? Big shout to Young Thug. Big shout to the homie baby. Shout out. We're really humble, and we appreciate the fact that while he was spitting his bars... Over his shoulder, in the studio, was your favorite, our favorite, your favorite rapper's favorite, your favorite producer's favorite, your favorite entertainer's favorite, your favorite media personality's favorite television, podcast, and radio show. We are humbled to say that we were on in the studio. We appreciate the love. Open invite to join the show. Please, we will be honored. And make sure all of our fans get out your phone right now and tweet him. We're in the trunk, okay? We've been doing this for five years. Get out your phone right now and let him know that you appreciate him showing us love. Shout out. What I loved about it the most is just like this studio, sound is very important in his studio. You know, he's what he's doing, he's working in a sound environment, but he had Jalen Jacoby on, but he also had the subtitles on. He couldn't listen to it, but he had the subtitles on just to see what we were talking about. And I appreciate that from you, Young Thugger. Not only did Young Thug give us a shout yesterday, legendary New York DJ, Mr. C, put up a clip from the show, and Jalen, you're going to love this caption. They got an ill studio set, even though they talk in sports. They got the ill hip-hop photos in the background. I've always said that Jalen Rose cares more about the pictures behind him than the words that come out of his mouth. It finally paid off. 
It finally paid off for you, Jalen Rose. Respect to Mr. C and Young Thug. Appreciate that so much. And Mr. C is a legend. What up, though? Mm-hmm. I'll let your boy come on the show. And I know he was tripping when he saw that J and he saw that big on the wall. The Immortals. So not only the NBA Finals are happening in the sports world, the NBA Draft is coming up. One of the focuses of the NBA Draft is the Los Angeles Lakers. What are they going to do with Jordan's Clarkson? What are they going to do with the number two pick? Who knows? There was this series of photos I wanted to show to our audience and to you, Mr. Rose. There were two photos of Julius Randle. There was supposed to be a before and an after photo of intense workout and training that he had done over a three-week period of time. Do these two photos show you the difference between the three weeks of intense training or the difference between sucking in your stomach and flexing for a photo? It shows me the three weeks of intensive training and sucking his stomach in a little bit for the photo. (laughs) I appreciate his work ethic. He has transformed his body. It's what you anticipate and expect from professional athletes to get paid to stay in tip-top shape. In particular, when you play for a team that drafted you in the lottery and haven't played in the playoffs just yet, and now they have Magic Johnson in the front office, along with Rob Polinka making decisions. Luke Walton is going into another year as the head coach. So it's put up a shut-up time for a young player who's had some flashes of brilliance, a couple of triple-doubles, had a couple of big-time weeks and, and moments. Now let's see if he can be more consistent. Well, when we talk about the Lakers in the draft, all anybody wants to talk about is Lonzo Ball, LeVar Ball, Lonzo Ball, LeVar Ball, Lonzo Bar, Ball, LeVar Ball. But there are some sneaky little reports coming out that perhaps the Lakers aren't as enamored with the Ball family as sports media is. There are some reports that they've been look, taking a hard look at Darren Fox and, as you suggested, taking a hard look at Joshua Jackson. Do you think that they are on to something with that? I think that they're doing their due diligence. But ultimately, if he's available at number two, that's who they're going to take. You can't tell me that Magic Johnson's not sitting up there feeling like, you know what, a big point guard that I get a chance to mold, make people around him better, and he has a terrific upside. I really think if they have an opportunity to take Lonzo Ball, that's what they're going to do. Now, this is something that we've discussed for a long time. And that finally, Adam Silver is ready to discuss it, and that is the age restriction as to when you can enter the NBA draft. Here's was his quote. I'm rethinking our position. So our historical position since we raised the age from 18 to 19 was that we want to go from 19 to 20, and the union's position is that they want to go from 19 to 18. Could we soon see the abolishment of the one-and-done rule in the NBA? If you abolish the rule and allow players to enter directly out of high school, there will be some horror stories. There are already some horror stories. Pay attention to this year's draft. There are only 60 players that are going to get drafted. It's going to be way more to enter the draft. And you know who we're not going to talk about? The early entrants that don't get drafted, that don't make a team, that probably end up overseas, that probably end up in the D-League. That's kind of how life works. I think you should have the opportunity to make that choice. I'm glad it's something that he he and the Players Association possibly will consider taking into account, and I hope that it gets changed. There's a lot of buzz about Mr. Met today. Mr. Met doesn't get a lot of attention. He is the Mets mascot. He's basically a baseball with a body. Mr. Met was walking off through a tunnel. It's kind of going underground. He felt like he was off wax, and a fan gave him a little bit of lip, and he turned around, held down three of his four fingers in what has been, uh, it's been read as flipping the bird to a fan. In Mr. Met's defense, I ask you a simple question. If you have four fingers, can you give a fan the middle finger? I don't think so. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Mr. Met, get at us. We are the law firm of Rose and Jacoby. We'll, feel, we'll represent you for free in whatever proceedings needed. And also, it just goes to show, Mr. Met, you are never off wax. I know you thought you were walking through the tunnel. I know you thought you weren't in the middle of the field. But you are never off wax when you are wearing a gigantic costume, Mr. Met. Come on now. Do you think that that employee will be fired? I don't think that employee will be fired. Here's why. You don't know who it is anyway. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly where I was going with this. It's like, oh, yeah, guess what? We fired that guy. His name was Steve. No one's going to follow up. You could be His name could be Jason. He could be right back in the Mr. Met. Something tells me Mr. Met learned this lesson. But you know what? I'm firmly on Mr. Met's side on this one. I, I don't know why. I'm just firmly, firmly on Mr. Met's side on this one. On this show, we have a simple motto.
We have a simple motto on this program. It is... Part of giving the people what they want is listening to the people. The way we listen to the people is they call us at 985-80-JALEN. They leave us voicemails, and we play them on the show just like this. What's up, Jalen and Jacoby? This is Mikey Fuesh from Boston, Massachusetts, living in Los Angeles right now. I've been a listener to the podcast uh, from you guys since I heard Jalen talk about uh, the entourage. Uh, That was a great episode, and that got me hooked. Uh, You guys are now my number one favorite sports anything show to listen to, to watch when it comes to sports. So thank you all for doing what you do. Jalen, I met you a couple times at the now closed man cave on Cahuenga. Um, You know, RIP to that spot, but you've been super cool, super cordial. Jacoby, I'm not a kangaroo posing as a person. I am a real person. Quick question. When talking about LeBron James and the pressure he feels and him being compared to Jordan, how come no one ever brings up the fact that if LeBron loses this finals to the Warriors, it'll be his second rubber match in his career that he's lost. He lost one rubber match to the Spurs, and he could lose one to the Warriors. Doesn't that say a lot about his legacy? And Jacoby, my uh, really good friend out here, Andrew, he's getting married in a couple of weeks. Do you have any tips on seating arrangements? Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a good one. Get the people what they want. Mikey Quest just took over the show. Shout out to him. Shout, Shout out to Mikey Quest from Boston, Los Angeles via Boston. First question he had for you was about LeBron James's legacy, and this will be the second trilogy that he's lost. Thanks for the shot. Appreciate the love. What up, though, to the homie Eddie, former owner of the Man Cave. I know he's opening up another spot somewhere soon. Shout out. We're not truly talking about LeBron James losing another rubber match because that's too smart. But here's what we will talk about. If he loses this series, he'll be 3-5 and in his eight total trips. However, if he wins, clearly it's going to give him his fourth championship ring. I'm not ready to even have the Jordan conversations. Look at a chessboard. Before you get to the king, there are a lot of other pieces there. There are rooks, there are knights, there are pawns. The bottom line is there's Kareem, there's Russell, there's Magic, and there's Jordan. Okay, so before I started to have that conversation, he got to at least pass a couple of those guys first. But he's having a terrific career. He's going to end up logically as a top five performer. We don't have to rush to try to anoint LeBron the greatest of all time in his 14th year. Allow this to play out and see what happens. Here's what I had to say about seating arrangements at a wedding. Who cares? You know what to do with the seating arrangements, but let me say this. Don't keep people seated for too long, okay? You don't have to do all the speeches and all the this and that. Here's what people want to do at a wedding. Not sit down. They want to party. So keep the seated part of the procession as short as possible. Thank you, Johnny Quest, for the shout and the call. Let's listen to another voicemail. Jalen and Jacoby, what's going on? This is Isaiah hollering at you from Oakland, California. If the Cavaliers and LeBron James end up losing the finals, does Cleveland kind of pull a Golden State and try to go after Blake Griffin? And my other question is, who's better in their prime, Isaiah Thomas or Isaiah Thomas? I personally think Isaiah Thomas, but I don't know. Keep getting the people what they want, fellas. Peace. Thanks for the love. Appreciate the shout. shout out. Too short, E40, MC Hammer. Mr. Fab, they will all tell you Detroit is just like Oakland. What up, though, Mark Curry? Now, with that being said, I like what you did with the Isaiah versus Isaiah thing. Clearly the bad mm-hmm. boys version and his two championships yep. and being a Hall of Famer has that title at this point. The best little guy yep. to compete in the NBA pound for pound for my money. That's first. Yep. Second. If the Cavs lose, will they pull a Golden State and add a Kevin Durant? Let me tell you guys something. I don't know if Blake Griffin is that player because I don't know he plays five and you can play him with Kevin Love and with his salary that won't fit. But let me tell you guys a secret. When Danny H. formed an original big three in Boston, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, and Kevin Garnett, Pat Riley did it in Miami. Joined Dwayne Wade was... Chris Bosh and LeBron James. Remember that press conference? Not five, not six, not seven. So you asking me, will LeBron James try to orchestrate having a power team? A super squad? Of course he would. You don't think he would try to get 
one of the top players from another squad to come run with him if they would want to? Absolutely they would try to. Win or lose. I want to recognize the NBA's real big three, and that is Mike Breen, Mark Jackson, and Jeff Van Gundy. Next, we're going to Twitter. This one is from Kendall. Kendall asks, any potential breakout performers during this year's NBA Finals? Before you answer, Jalen, I want to point out, Game 1 last year was owned by Sean Livingston. You know, there is always those role players that break out. Who is on that list for you this year? If the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to make this a long series and win this series, the breakout player has to be an all-star this year that got benched during the run last year. That's Kevin Love. He's averaging two times more points, as you mentioned, this year in the run. He's getting double-figure rebounds. He's been a catch-and-shoot player. He's been posting up smaller players, taking advantage of his matchup, his outlet passing. In particular, his passing in the half-court offense has been exquisite. They're going to need him to play really well versus Draymond Green, versus whoever he's matched up against for the Warriors. I'm going to ask this next Twitter question just to make you, Jalen Rose, and our producer Reggie angry. Uncle Mar asks, if the Cavaliers win, does that make Kyle Korver and Darren Williams Hall of Famers? Get off the bandwagon. No, they won't be Hall of Famers. Nope. They're longtime <laughs> veterans, but they won't be Hall of Famers. They have an opportunity to be champions, though. I'm not mad at that. Yep. They have the opportunity to be champions, but not Hall of Famers. If you are listening on ESPN Radio, I wish you could see the face that Jalen Rose made when I asked that question. Let's listen to another voicemail. Hi, Jalen and Jacoby. This is Beth from South Carolina. Just wanted to let you know that I've been listening to your podcast for a long time. Originally founded on Grantland. No man introduced me to you boys other than the pod father. I am in my 40s. I'm a lawyer and a mother of three and a former captain of the United States Marine Corps. And I really, really enjoy your show. I love all things sports. My question for you is this. What do you think J.R. Smith's impact on the finals is going to be? Do you think he could be the difference maker and help the Cleveland Cavaliers win the championship? Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks for the – Hold up. Before you answer, Jalen Rose, I just want to recognize a few things. Number one, she paid respect to the podfather. You have to love that. Number two, mother of three. Love that. Number three – Appreciate your service. God, I love this caller. Shout to you, Beth. Jalen Rose, please continue about your And number four, she says she's a captain in love sports. With that being said, I don't remember the question because you do it all. What did she say? What was that she question? She asked about J.R. Smith's, Smith's impact. Oh, okay, cool. J.R. Smith, here's, here's the impact of J.R. Smith. They're going to try to hide Steph Curry on him a lot, and I say that respectfully. So they, he has to be – aggressive in the half-court offense. You're going to see LeBron James at the top of the floor, Kevin Love and or Tristan Thompson setting down screens on the left block as you face the hoop to try to get him curling over his left shoulder towards his right hand to get layups, maybe some flare or fade action, in particular catch and shoots. He will be a guy, there are certain games throughout this series where he makes at least five threes. He is a, he is a prototypical heat check type of player, He will have a couple of those moments. Now, Jalen, you know we don't have too many guests on this show. you got to be VIP to get onto this guest list. Today we have a special celebrity guest, none other than first takes Molly Carroll. Here she is. Molly Wood is in the building. We have one quick question for you, Molly Wood. We've already sure. seen game one. I just have one. to say celebrity is a very loose term. That's fair. I mean, if you're a celebrity to us, you're a big celebrity to yeah. us. That's why I have my shades. I feel more big time. It lo- you look more big time. Yeah. Who do you pick for the series now that we've seen game one? Mm. Wait for it. I'm out here in Oakland. We're going Warriors in five. Wow. My favorite number. Warriors they come out you. in the people what they want. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much. It's a boss move. For watching. <laughs> Thank you. On ESPN2 and ESPN News. You're far too kind. For listening on ESPN Radio <laughs> and subscribing to the Jalen and Jacoby podcast. <laughs> you guys are the best. You're far too kind. Got to give the beat.